Right, quick video, rods and sods. Uh, this is Rover V8 pistons, con rods. Uh, they've all come out of an engine, which I've stripped down. Uh, the engine wasn't in great shape. Uh, for a start off, the sump was filled with EP80 or EP90 uh, gear oil, probably to overcome the problems it was having with uh, oil pressure. As you can see, the bearing shells, these are main bearing shells. They're all down to the copper. Big M bearing shells, they're not actually that much better. Shame, all original Van der Velle bearings, soft bearings. Uh, the engine has standard low compression pistons. Uh, the balls don't have any lips on them. So the engine would appear prior to this incident to have been fairly low mileage, um, which is kind of one of those things that happens. Um, the initial diagnosis of the engine was that um, the bottom end was filled with gear oil. Um, I've got a, probably some photographs I can dump on it for you. Um, however, there was no oil whatsoever in the oil pump. So what's happened is someone's uh, run the oil pump dry uh, for one reason or another. Uh, maybe they've changed the, uh, the rotors or something. I don't know, but they hadn't primed the oil pump. They started the engine up and there's no way is a Rover V8 going to prime its oil pump by itself. It needs help. It needs Vaseline packing out or it needs some way of winding the oil pressure up. So what I've basically been doing is I have cleaned all of these comrades. I've got them all numbered. There we are, number seven. Conrods have all come out. What I've effectively done is I've done a couple of tests on the conrods. First and foremost, I know that the gudgeon pin comes out of a piston. Okay, I know that's three conrod and one piston. The gudgeon pin, which comes out of the piston, and this one's quite tight, which is uncharacteristic. In fact, let's get one that's loose. Um, yeah, there's one that's loose. Um, the gudgeon pins are a really healthy, tight fit inside the conrod. So I know that the small end inside the comrod is good. The way a Rover V8 works is the comrod's fixed inside the rod and it rotates on the piston. So it's this surface inside here the piston provides the slip. So first check, gadget pins are good. Next check, what I do is I check the length of each of the rods. I'm making sure they're not bent to be quite honest um, because I don't know the history of the engine. Um, what I'm effectively doing here is I am just going to adjust this vernier until it's a really snug fit like that that is a super snug fit right so that goes in so what i've basically done there is i've measured the shortest distance between the big end journal and the small end journal that is a dead flat fit get another conrod do exactly the same thing and it should be exactly the same length Oops, as you can see, I've got it to the nearest thou, so I might have gone a bit tight on that. Okay, let's loosen this off just a tiny bit. Loosen that just a tiny bit. There it goes in now, so <laughs> literally half a thou. So that goes in, slips in, nice, slips in, nice, all of these. It goes in, it's nice. All of these conrods are absolutely spot on. Okay, so we know that the conrods aren't bent, we know that the conrods are all the same length. The next thing I was doing was checking the big end journal, or the sorry, not the journal, the big end hole that the bearings go into, making sure it's oval. And to do that, I'm just using a very, very simple bore gauge. Um, I stick one end in and I pivot to the other end until. It, and I know roughly what size this is going to be until it just about goes into a tight spot which it's done there and then I measure it at that point and I measure it at that point it goes in and I measure it at that point so I know whatever axis I'm going across this hole is exactly the same measurement so that's round so I know that that journal's round Obviously, if the engine has been running tight, the bearings have all shot, they've all run, the engine's been overheated, I don't know. I want to make sure that these comrods are in good shape. And from all my checks, every single one of these comrods is spot on, as are all of the gudgeon pins. These gudgeon pins are all good. Right. So, how do I measure gudgeon pins? Let's move my other tools out of the way. Gudgeon pin. Looking at the reference material I've got here, I know the gudgeon pin should be diameter, I'll work in thousandths of an inch if you don't mind, um, 
874 thousandths or 874.6 to 874.9 thousandths of an inch. I know there's points and points and points, but if I set this uh, micrometer here to 800, so this is a, a naught to one, so I've got 800, sorry, yeah, 800 thousandths, um, and then I've got two graduations there, which makes the 50, 24 makes 74. So this thing here, I want to make sure that, that goes through. Let's take a bit of cardboard out of there. I want to make sure it goes through at 74, but that it isn't like a dick in the bucket. In fact, I can set this thing to one graduation further. So it's 874. If I go to 6, which would be there. Right, so that's the minimum measurement. And that is a really nice snug fit in there. And again, I do the middle, nice snug fit. I do here, nice snug fit. And I do here, nice snug fit. So what I've established from that, from measuring with the micrometer, is that that gudgeon pin is absolutely spot on the entire length. Now, there's some machining marks on here. This um, borders here, let's use a piece of cardboard to measure it. So these borders here, these marks here, are, are, are superficial. These marks here, cross hatches, are literally where its um, interference fits with the conrod. So the conrod goes on into that area there. Okay. So that's what that is. Right now, gudgeon pins. Gudgeon pin obviously needs to be quite a tight fit in here, but it is, uh, should still turn. So what the documentation says is here: clearance in piston, and it's telling me one ten thousandth to three ten thousandths of an inch. I can't, I've, I've not got anything that will measure that close, but I'll tell you one thing. If I hold the piston nice and tight down against the bench and get hold of the gudgeon pin, which is halfway into one half of the piston. You hear it? But turn it round, put the other end in. Yeah, so piston's knackered. Right. Let's choose that one that I had earlier on, where it was a tight fit. So this one, this gut and pin is tight. Again, we can check it using the micrometer. So I'm checking all the key areas as I go along. We've got the um, gut and pin, it's all good. It's popping in. Is that the one? Yes, it was the one that came off. So this one was tight. Now, if I put that on the bench and rock it, just as bad, turn it around, tight that side, yeah, see on this side we've got one half of the piston is okay, the other half has got wear on it, what I then notice is as we look into the piston, if I get the light onto it, um, you can see that there's scratches and score marks inside the piston, where it's basically been starved of oil. So unfortunately, these pistons is going to make great toothbrush holders, but they're not going to be going up and down inside cylinders at 6,000 RPM anymore, I'm afraid. Right, what was the other thing I found about pistons? Oh, yes. The other measure what we've got on pistons is um, uh, the amount of deflection you've got on the piston. As the piston's going up and down inside the cylinder, yeah, um, there's going to be a certain amount of, um, I guess, overling of the piston. So I've got a bigger micrometer here. Look at this fella. What I'm basically looking for here, um, it tells me, in this page, I knew this already, but the um, the cylinder bore on a Rover V8 in standard uh, setup is 3.5 inches exactly. And the clearance for the early type pistons at right angles to the gudgeon pin at the top of the skirt is plus 7 thousandths to 13 thousandths. So... If I go, first of all, to three and a half thousand, or sorry, three and a half inches, I should say, that's three and a half inches. So basically, I know that this is a three to four inch uh, micrometer. I've measured out to 0.5, and it's on the zero scale. Oh no, sorry, it's on the 25 scale. It's on the zero scale, so that's three and a half inches. I need to take off that. Um, let me take off that 13 thou. So that's going to be um, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
that's 13 down. Let me lock that there. Lock that into position. Now, at right angles to the gudgeon pin, that should be a reasonably snug fit. Mm, it's a bit loose. The piston's warm. Okay, so let's find out what measurement it actually is then. So let me unlock. Let me wind it using the little bit on the end there. Now, if I fix one end and rotate the other, I get to a point where it's just about touching. It's probably a bit too tight now. Right, that's due. Let me just tighten that up. So we have got here 4.5 4 4.69 Sorry, sorry, 3.469 So the piston at right angles to the gudgeon pin is borderline type, but the piston rings normally take up that difference. Okay, so if at the top of the piston it's that measurement which we're getting here, in theory, if I rotate the piston and measure the bottom of the piston, that should also fit on. Nowhere near. So I'm going to have to wind this out. Right, let me measure how much I have to wind this out by. So that's one thousandth, two thousand. Now, three if I look thousand. at this measurement, then, oh crikey, that's one and a half thousandths of an inch off the cylinder ball, as it should be a standard. So if the cylinder ball was still um, three and a half inches, that side of the skirt there is going to be running very tight in the cylinder. So then I rotate through ninety degrees and I measure at the gudgeon pin. It's like a dick in a bucket, isn't it? So what's basically happened is these pistons have overheated or done whatever. They're still circular at the top, but they're oval at the bottom, where that's the narrow side and they're going fat here. So that's the widest point, the thinnest point, and at the top they're circular. Um, if it wasn't for the gudgeon pins being a, uh, a knackered fit, it's, uh, it's a shame, but uh, I need new pistons. What a pain in the ass!